up, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. Code accepted. Welcome to the comic universe. Enjoy the review. What up, guys, and welcome to the web's first must-see comic and nerd culture show. I'm Dr. J. I've got a PhD in nerd culture, and I should know. I printed it out myself. Welcome to the comic universe. And I am here today to cover a new movie that just came out relatively recently by the man, the myth, the legend himself, Steven Spielberg. And that is, of course, Ready Player One, based on this awesome book uh, written by Ernie Klein or Ernest Klein. And I will say I have read both the book and I've read the book twice, uh, once oh, when it first came out. And of course, I read it right before I went to see the movie. And yes, I actually do read these fancy books that they don't have any pictures in it. I know, shocking. Despite all the comics that are on my wall, I actually can read books that don't have pictures in them. Surprise. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of the book, I'm a big fan of the movie, so I was really excited to cover this movie. And I gotta say, man, I was not disappointed. Now, was this movie the best movie ever? Is this going to be a game changer? Is this something groundbreaking, nuanced, and innovative? No, not at all, honestly. It is a very, very simplistic, um, honestly predictable story. But the point of the story isn't supposed to... The po story isn't supposed to be some nuanced, deep character piece. Yes, there are deep philosophical, uh, you know, themes within Ready Player One, but it isn't supposed, it isn't presented to be this huge think piece. Ready Player One is a movie that is all about escapism. Um, I won't go into major spoilers here, um, because I do still, I want you guys to see the movie, but I will go into spoilers here and there, and I will give a warning when I do, um, talk about small spoilers. Uh, but, Ready Player One is all about escapism. This It's about, um, you know, maybe 40s, um, 20, 20, 30 years in the future, um, where this guy, um, uh, what is it? I think his name is something like, um, Hall Halliday? Yeah, Halliday. Where, um, you know, this guy Halliday invents basically this huge, v um, fully immersive VR MMO experience called The Oasis. So pretty much this movie is, the best way I could describe it in an elevator pitch is, think Sword Art Online meets Willy Wonka. So essentially, right, um, this guy, um, H Halliday, is a game developer who grew up in the 80s and 90s and loved just all the different pop nerd culture that existed back then. He was a huge fan of it, and he, and he used a lot of uh, comic nerd culture, TV, movies, all, uh, toys, and all that stuff to escape from the real world because he couldn't connect with people and had a hard time really being a part of the real world. Huh. Sounds like somebody. Um, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think, Thea? I can't place it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I definitely, this movie is meant for nerds, geeks of all shapes and sizes, because, let's be real, all of us, all of us love these things, fantasy, sci-fi, toys, video games, um, movies, TV, we love all of this stuff because it's just a break from our day-to-day -day world, right? And it allows us this escape, and it lets us forget our problems. But sometimes running away from your problems will just give you even worse problems to deal with. And that's kind of what our main character, Wade Watts, eventually realizes as the story goes on. Honestly, it's kind of funny, but um, the big message of the movie, when it, you know, when you when it boils down to it, is Go outside and live a little, you bunch of nerds. Because, <laughs> seriously, um, 
the whole point is, yes, it's really awesome to be able to escape into these worlds and, you know, be these characters and things like that. But human connection and human interaction, that's what makes the world beautiful. And we can't forget that. And it really hits home to modern society and especially nerd culture. And nerd, nerd culture specifically is a culture that, it, you know, grows and feeds off of nostalgia. And boy, is this a nostalgia fest. I'm not even going to attempt to name all the Easter eggs and references that I saw in this movie. But there are a couple in particular that just blew my freaking mind. Um, of course, um, DPZ, man... If you're watching this, there's a scene in Ready Player One that I know for a fact uh, you will either internally scream or just straight up shout in your movie theater a little bit because that, I feel like, was made directly for you. Like, Steven Spielberg has been looking at some of your fanfic videos and was like, yo, I like the cut of this kid's jib. Let me go ahead and use this idea. <laughs> um... But seriously though, all jokes aside, uh, some of the references and just the visual homages to very, very classic, iconic things in nerd culture, those, they definitely make the movie, but it's never just, that's not the only thing that this movie is about. Yes, it's, very pre it's a very prevalent element, but the movie isn't just about, hey, we're going to just throw all these references at you. The references have a point in the movie. And again, the whole movie itself is learning the mistake of not disconnecting by overconnecting, if that makes any sense. Because in this world, so many people are so heavily connected through the Oasis, through this game, that they lose, you know, kind of the, the magic that you get when you connect with somebody in real life and you know as somebody who not to get a little not to get too personal here but as somebody who uh, you know met someone online and uh, you know st started a serious relationship with them and eventually did meet them in person and you know n now we're in a happy relationship i totally related to like the stuff Wade and Artemis were going through with, you know, they didn't really know who each other were at first because, you know, they met through off, uh, they met through online, they met online and, you know, Artemis had these fears of like, you know, you're going to be disappointed when you see me in real life. You know, this isn't how I look. This isn't my real body. This is just Avatar. Although I call total BS on that one part. Like I can suspend my disbelief with this massive, expansive, immersive video game world, but the one part I cannot suspend my disbelief on is any universe in all of any the whole of existence there is no universe that exists anywhere where olivia cook is not just drop dead gorgeous and whatever guy who she meets online isn't gonna be super hyped that the girl they connected with online is olivia cook and they like them so yeah like that whole oh you're gonna be disappointed when you actually meet me in real life i did not buy that at all um because i mean in the book they definitely sell it up that um both artemis and um percival are definitely not conventionally attractive people because they're shut-in gamers but of course it's hollywood they all gotta be pretty so, you know, that's not necessarily a knock, that's just a personal nitpick, given, um, you know, the situation and how I personally relate to it. But, yeah, I did feel for that. Again, this is very relevant to today's culture. A lot of people meet through online, and a lot of people build, you know, very strong, successful relationships online. Hell, this entire channel, like, the friends I have on here, some of my closest friends ever, I have met online. And I, I you know, I would never take any of that friendship back. And... That's kind of the thing here. Friendship is also a big theme in this movie. Like, you know, the friends you meet online, that does, they, um, just because, you know, they're a world away, they're a country away, they're a few states away, they might even live next door to you. It doesn't matter. Um, if you connect, if you share a mutual love of something, they are your real friends. 
And I think that's just, it's a simple message, but it's a beautiful one. Again, this isn't a complicated movie. Most of the Easter eggs and challenges, um, if you're familiar with pop culture at all, they're probably going to be easy as shit to figure out. And I, I just realized I cursed for a second. But yeah, they're going to be really easy to figure out. Um, um, the, the first challenge is a race. Um, and it's a, again, it's pretty easy to circumvent when you really think about it. Um, again, I'm not going to spoil uh, probably my favorite challenge of the three challenges that were presented. But uh, it references a very classic cult movie. And the final battle in this movie is just super nostalgia overload. Just, just There are characters that are going at it that you would never expect to just start brawling. And it is fantastic as a, just a fan to see this happen before your eyes. It just, like, you feel like a little kid. And, like, you know when you're a kid and you're, like, playing with your action figures and, like, having like the flash fight the pink ranger right and like you have them fighting each other because you know they never meet or like you know you have um what is it like the pink ranger versus Jon snow who would win in the fight here obviously the pink ranger would win because you know john i mean i guess john has ghosts but whatever we're not going to get into this debate but you get the point, like, that whole scene is basically what that equates to, and it just brings out this whole childlike sense of wonder that Steven Spielberg is obviously super famous for. He is the man behind many of our childhoods, and boy, does he remind us that. And it's fantastic, and it isn't just a Spielberg love fest either. He doesn't actually reference a lot of his own work, which I appreciate. This could have easily been you know, Steven Spielberg patting himself on the back, uh, but it wasn't, and that was awesome. Uh, the fact that they were able to put this together just blew my mind. Again, it's not a super complicated story. It's a very simple and, you know, honestly a little predictable story, but it's very effective and it has a very sweet message that is honestly relatable to a lot of people, and it's enjoyable. It's a lot of fun. Again, it's a really good time. Totally recommend it. Ready Player One is a movie that any nerd, anyone of any capacity, if you think, if you consider yourself a nerd, an outcast, if you really just feel down, out, and alone out there, this is a movie that I think will resonate with you. And honestly, you'll enjoy it because I enjoyed the hell out of it. Oh my god. I can't praise it enough. Um, like I said, definitely check out Ready Player One, and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below. Also in the comments down below, just for fun's sake, in case you haven't seen the movie yet, and for some reason you watched um, this review anyway, tell me in the comments down below, what is your dream versus, um, you know, inter-universe versus match? Like, Jon Snow versus the Pink Ranger, or Daenerys and her dragons versus, like, uh, I don't know, Hiccup, Daenerys versus Hiccup, even though we know what's, who's gonna win there, uh, you know, stuff like that, let me know, what are your favorite, what are your favorite, um, dream team crossover matches in the comments down below, tell me all of that, and don't forget to stay tuned for the outro card, so that you can check out our latest upload, um, to the channel, as well as a video that YouTube's Mysterious Algorithm thinks you might like, and definitely, uh, click that channel icon you will see in the outro card as well, Hit that notification bell because YouTube system will not send you notifications unless you click that bell. So if you want to be notified every time we upload a, beauty, uh, a video on this wonderful channel, definitely hit that notification bell so you get notified. As well, I will leave a link to my individual channel, Mr. J's Reviews. If you like what I do here for the universe, definitely come to my individual corner, Mr. J's Reviews. I cover a bunch of TV, movies, comics, books anime, generally all things nerdy. If you like any of that stuff, I would really appreciate it if you go over to my channel and hit that subscribe button as well. I will leave a link annotated in the outro card. But until next time, guys, uh, this is Jay from Miss Jay's Reviews for the comic universe. Hope you enjoyed your time at the asylum. And like I always say, once a comic geek, always a comic geek. And once a nerd, always a nerd. Remember, it's never game over, man. It's never game over. Peace.